Well, it's the end of the week. Welcome to Ainsley Bullion News. It's Friday, 5th of June. Today's topic, Fed Chief warns of big losses. Whilst US and European share markets finished in the red last night, excluding the DJIA, it was more notable for the NASDAQ coming within a fraction of recapturing its all-time high in mid-February before it went on to fall 30% to late March. The speed with which the share market in general has bounced back is already one for the record books. We discussed yesterday the role the Fed had played in this extraordinary bounce, and the chart below says it all. Look at that. What a rebound. Whether it is Pavlov, Pavlovian, as discussed yesterday, or fundamentally casual, there seems little doubt that the Fed's monetary stimulus is driving this nonsensical rally. Indeed, when BMO, who manage $60 billion, ask their clients, what is driving this bounce? Here are the results from that question. What's driving the swift recovery of equities? A, the Fed, 73% answered. B, earnings optimism, 0%. <clears throat> C, labor market recovery, 6%. D, further fiscal stimulus, 5%. E, progress in treating preventing COVID-19, 6%. F, other please specify. Reopening, optimism, all of the above, or underinvestment. With Fed at 73%, I think that says it all. GMO's Jeremy Grantham was quoted yesterday after they slashed their exposure to equities. From Bloomberg, we have never lived in a period where the future was so uncertain. Grantham, who's 81, wrote, The key here is uncertainty, which in some ways seems the highest in my experience. The coronavirus pandemic has taken a toll on the economy, that isn't yet being reflected in stock prices, he said. The legendary money manager who co-founded Boston-based GMO and it is long-term investment strategist said that the price-to-earnings ratio for stocks is now at the top 10% historically, while the US economy is in the worst 10%, or even perhaps the worst 1%. This is apparently one of the most impressive mismatches in history, he wrote. It is somewhat ironic too that this fed fuel bubble led now by Chaired our Fed Chair Jerome Powell was foretold by then ordinary FOMC committee member Jerome Powell in 2012, via official minutes as well. The market in most cases will cheer us for doing more. It will never be enough for the market. Our model will always tell us that we are helping the economy, and I will probably always feel that those benefits are overestimated. And we will be able to tell ourselves that market function is not impaired and that inflation expectations are under control. What is to stop us other than much faster economic growth, which is probably not in our power to produce? I think that we are really at a point of encouraging risk-taking, and that should give us pause. Investors really do understand now that we will be there to prevent serious losses. It is not that it is easy for them to make money, but that they have every incentive to take more risk, and they are doing so. Meanwhile, we look at what we are blowing a fixed income duration bubble right across the credit spectrum, that will result in big losses when rates come up down the road. You can almost say that that is our strategy. Have a listen to that again. That was written by the head of the world's biggest central bank. This rally is all according to prophecy, it seems. Tonight you will see the May NFP employment figures for the US with expectations of 8 million job losses and a 19.5 unemployment figure, the worst since the Great Depression. Last night saw another 1.88 million jobless claims for the week ending 30th of May. Notable, notable for it being the first sub-2 million number since layoffs started in mid-March. Continuing claims, the total number of Americans claiming unemployment benefits, increased to 21.5 million. Things may be improving since reopening, but they clearly are still bad. Senior Bloomberg economist Yelena Shalakteya says, Stubbornly, Elevated jobless claims are yet another statistic showing that labour market recovery will not be swift. The latest claims data coming back on the back of non-factoring ISM survey, which showed the employment sub-index barely nudged in May from a record low in April, contradicting the signal from a better-than-expected ADP employment. All great grounds for record-high share valuations, right? Hmm. The Fed is, of course, not the only show in town, and last night the ECB announced a surprise Euro 600 billion against a Euro 500 billion expected expansion of their QE program, effectively doubling, doubling it to 1.3 trillion.
trillion euros and extending it out to June 2021, all whilst keeping interest rates at negative 0.5%. From Bloomberg, action has to be taken, ECB chief Lagarde said in a press conference. While there are nascent signs of a downturn bottoming out, the improvement has so far been tethered. Lagarde revealed sweeping downward revisions to the ECB's projection for growth and inflation in the region. In 2020, the bloc will likely see a contraction of 8.7% before rebounding by 5.2% in 2021. Under a more severe scenario with a strong resurgence of infections, output could shrink by as much as 12.6% this year. Inflation, which she said is the, inv- the ultimate justification for the stimulus, will accelerate only slowly and is seen averaging 1.3% by 2022, far below the goal of just under 2%. Check out this graph here showing us how serious the slump really was. The ECB baseline scenario sees economic output contracting 8.7% in 2020. The mantra may be don't fight the Fed or the BOG, the PBOC, the ECB, the BOE, RBA, etc. But the head of that very same Fed has warned so doing will result in big losses. So be prepared. And again, thanks for joining us this week on Ainsley News. Hope you're doing well out there. We'll catch you Monday. And remember, you can always duck over to our website, ainsleybullion.com.au, to read any of our news articles. And we'll catch you soon.